Hello and welcome. My name is Hilary Handley and I'm a global medical researcher with the Reinsurance Group of America. Today I'm really pleased to be joined by Dr. Mer Meredith Jackrell. Um, Dr. Jackrell received her PhD in chemistry in 2010 and in 2017 she became an assistant professor at Washington University in the Department of Chemistry. Her work focuses on how protein misfolding occurs. Um, and how it can lead to disease and how protein remodeling factors can prevent or even reverse misfolding. Dr. Jackrell is also a former research grant recipient of the Longer Life Foundation, a nearly 25 year collaboration between RGA and Washington University. It funds cutting edge research into the drivers of mortality and morbidity. Dr. Jackal, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to speak with me today and talk about how such funding is helping to progress advances in medicine. If I could just start with a question, who or what sparked your interest in medical science and then what inspired you to become involved in research? Sure. So I've always just been very interested in um, the science of life. I think that was one of my earliest interests was just understanding how things work the way they the way they do and so I always knew that I wanted to pursue a career that involved science in some way um, and then uh, later on um, once I started in high school and college I started to do some research and um, actually get involved in lab work and I realized that I really enjoyed the actual figuring things out of kind of studying a system for the first time and really understanding how things function the way that they do and so um, I quickly realized that that was something that I would really enjoy if I was able to do that on a on a day to day basis. So your research has focused on protein misfolding and um, in, in implication in neurodegenerative diseases. Um, so what really has been your most important finding to date? Sure. So when I was a postdoc, um, I was working on this really interesting protein that's from baker's yeast that was able to dissolve clumps of proteins in yeast. And these protein uh, conformations and clumps are actually quite similar to those that accumulate in patients with ALS or Lou Gehrig's dis disease as well as Parkinson's disease. And so we thought at that time, well, perhaps if this protein in yeast is doing all of this, we could apply it to some of these uh, proteins that aggregate in human disease. And we were able to do this. And then I'd say that our biggest finding was that we could actually use protein engineering to tweak that um, disaggregase enzyme and make some new versions that could uh, dissolve these clumps even more efficiently. And we've now gone on to show that this um, that these variants of this protein can dissolve both these protein clumps in the test tube and then also in animal models. And now in my in my lab, um, we're working on some similar proteins that are present in humans, and we found that they also are able to um, break up these clumps of uh, ALS and Parkinson's proteins. And so we're now really excited to kind of apply some of those findings from our early work of how we can tweak, the, tweak these proteins to some of these um, new human proteins that we've discovered. This is clearly fascinating work. Um, are there any new directions or innovations you envisage driving your research work in the coming years? Yeah, so, so we're essentially continuing to explore those two main um, avenues of kind of understanding how protein misfolding occurs and how that drives diseases like ALS and Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative disorders, and then also how uh, different disaggregases can reverse this. And so we're really interested in going from engineering the proteins themselves to developing approaches maybe with certain drugs that could boost the, the disaggregases because that might be more um, straightforward therapeutically. And our systems are also very adaptable. We, we do a lot of work using a yeast model system. And so we think we can use a lot of these same ideas to um, apply and apply them to uh, other proteins that essentially, and essentially develop ways to study various proteins that misfold in essentially um, any disease. And we think that there may be many uh, proteins that misfold that haven't even yet been identified that we can then go and apply these um, ideas, ideas to. 
Um, so just to talk a little bit about funding, um, could you tell us a little bit about the impact of financial support from groups like the Longer Life Foundation? How critical is that support for the success of reachers, researchers like yourself, um, especially in driving pilot and feasibility um, research and then going on to secure those larger grants? Yeah, it really is critical. Um, so lab research is extremely expensive, uh, both for paying salaries of researchers in my group and also purchasing supplies. Um, and we're given some funding by our university to get things going in the first few years of our research program, but this is not enough to last for very long. And in, in general, there's a lot of different ideas we can pursue. We brainstorm a lot and there needs to be some strong justification for pursuing a project, either through some really promising early results or some funding res funding support. And um, when a project is new, that's especially important. And so um, I received the Longer Life Foundation uh, funds to pursue studies of some of these human disaggregates, and we made some nice discoveries early on. Um, but we also hit a lot of dead ends and hurdles that I think had we not had the funding from Longer Life Foundation, we may have gone off in a different direction, but we had that funding, so we really kind of pushed a bit further, and then we were able to find this uh, enzyme, this new enzyme that can dissolve um, some of these proteins, and we've able, been able to take that idea and fold that into some of our NIH proposals and keep this going as a longer running project. And so now we've been able to um, secure fi uh, five years of funding to keep pursuing the these ideas rather than just that initial um, pilot launch. And so um, it's really important because it could take us two to three years of doing pilot experiments before an idea is really considered fundable. And so having that funding can keeps things keeps things going until we are able to do that. It's really great to hear about how that funding is helping. Um, so just lastly, um, could you describe your, your sort of hopes and aims in just a few words for me, please? Yeah, so that would be, I think, developing new treatments for neurodegenerative disease. That's really great. Um, Dr. Jackrell, I know you're really busy, so thank you again for your time today. We really appreciate it and hearing all about your important research work. Um, and I hope you all have enjoyed listening to this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.